What's going on everybody on YouTube, everybody on Twitch? This is your boy, Emery Reigns, bringing you some more Dead or Alive content, as you guys know that I do so much. Um, I'd like to think I do it pretty well. <laughs> um, we're going to be going over DOA 3 today. Just a couple of things that I want to talk about with this game. Um, just turning this game on brings back a lot of feelings from when I was a child, and I played this game back in 2000. And... <sighs> this game came out in 2000 and two correct or 2001 on the original we'll find out right now I should say right I believe it came out in 2001 on the original Xbox or 2001 yeah it came out in 2001 on the original Xbox um, so obviously this there was some time between this game and Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate this game is my childhood right here it isn't the first DOA game I ever played but it is the game that I played so much when I was a kid so back when I was younger I was pretty poor you know we didn't have a lot of stuff we barely had an Xbox the original Xbox and um, you know I wanted DOA 4 before I had an Xbox 360 so I played DOA 3 up until uh, 2000 and 2000 and DOA 3 and DOA 2 up until about 2007. I didn't get my hands on DOA 4 for the first time until 2007. So I played DOA 3 and DOA 2 Ultimate religiously up until that point. Now keep in mind, 2001 all the way up to 2007, that's a long time to be playing a game, right? But I also had DOA 2 Ultimate and it had on online. Luckily, my brother had Xbox Live, so I was able to play DOA 2U online back when I was younger. I was really bad at the game, but that's how I started to learn how to play it. I had no fighting game fundamentals, none. But this game right here is pretty much what created that path for Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate. And then, you know, I would go back between DOA 2 Ultimate and DOA 4, I mean DOA 3, and notice the, the gameplay differences. Like, wow, this behaves this way. I didn't quite understand frame data or any of that yet, but I would notice certain animations and certain things. And also, one of the biggest things was me being a Hayate player, um, starting to play him in DOA 3. Obviously, this is the first game he was in. He wasn't in Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate, so that's mostly why I went back to play DOA 3, because Hayate wasn't in DOA 2 Ultimate, um, even though I was an Iron Man as well. But with that said, a lot of you guys, this is your first Dead or Alive game. This is a lot of people's first DOA game. Then they went back, like me, and played DOA 2 and DOA 1, the classic games. Growing up as a kid, I was more of a Tekken guy. We always had Tekken. I always had Tekken 3, Tekken 2. And one day, my brother took me over to um, his friend's house who lived in the apartment complex with us at the time. And they were playing Dead or Alive 2 on the Dreamcast. Now, I had no idea what Dead or Alive 2 was, but I knew how to match buttons in Tekken. So, I got on DOA 2 with these guys on the Dreamcast, and I was whooping their ass. They were like, this little fucking 5, 4-year-old is kicking my ass right now. What is going on? This is back in 99, so I'm beating the brakes off of these dudes at 4 or 5 years old. Because um, I knew how to counter and everything, and they had no idea how to do this shit. Even at 4 or 5 years old, I knew how to do this stuff. Um, so then the Xbox uh, original came out, and my brother got it for Christmas. I remember because he had a job at the time at a shoe store. I don't know why I'm telling you guys all this backstory stuff, but hopefully it's interesting as it sounds to me. But he had a, a job um, at a shoe store in a mall or something like that, and he bought the original Xbox. DOA 3 was a launch title, so he bought this, and he bought another game at the time, which was a launch title. And I was like, you got fucking D Dead or Alive 3? Like, at this point, I have never owned a DOA game. None of us did. But I did play it before, and I loved it, but again, we didn't have a lot of money growing up, so we didn't have DOA access to DOA at all. So, um, we started playing DOA 3, and I fall in love with the game. And believe it or not, on DOA 2, when I played at the guy's house, when I was, uh, like, the year before, I was playing with Katsumi of all characters. Um, so I played a lot of DOA 3 growing up, and they used to beat the brakes off me because my brother learned how to counter, and then my other brother learned how to counter, and it was over. But I learned how to counter, and I got good at the game, and eventually they couldn't beat me anymore. So DOA was a family game for me. We all used to play the game, and that's how we always, you know, it kind of stuck with us. So... I'm going to go ahead and go into training here and just talk about the game a little bit. Um, so, <clears throat> the thing about Dead or Alive 3, I loved this game growing up. I really did love this game growing up. However, from a competitive standpoint, when I look back at this game, I consider this game to be a joke. Um... Any DOA game, in my opinion, that had a three-point hold, I just can't take seriously. The fact that you could counter every mid with the same hold, I, I absolutely thought was ridiculous to me. 
when I started to understand DOA competitively. As a casual game, this was a great casual fighting game. Great. To play, just mash buttons with your friends and your brothers and sisters. This wasn't a good game competitively, in my opinion. A lot of people will argue that, oh, DOA, DOA 3 was great. I personally did not think it was that good. Now, Dead or Alive 3.1, I never actually got a chance to play Dead or Alive 3.1. DOA 3.1 essentially is the Japanese version of Dead or Alive 3 that apparently is 10 million times better than this version. It's got better mechanics, um, and it plays more like a competitive game. Again, I've never played this game, uh, Dead or Alive 3.1. I've only ever played the original. So, again, I don't hate this game. From a competitive, you guys know I'm competitive. You guys know that I've been playing this game a long time. I just don't like this game as a competitive game. It's a beautiful game. Look at this game. This game came out in 2001. And side by side with Dead or Alive 6, let's be honest here, it's not that much of a difference. You know what I'm saying? There might be a couple of different effects here and there. You can definitely distinguish that one game is older than the other. But look at these character models in 2001. Look at the games that came out after this that look like shit. Look at Tekken 5 DR and Tekken 5 Vanilla for the PlayStation 2 that came out in, what, 2004, 2005? This game looks 10 times better than those games. No game was competing with Dead or Alive 3 back then. And this all comes back to the fact that Dead or Alive had such a big budget back then. This game had such a big budget as a launch title. This game was the shit. So, this is, again, this is back when DOA legitimately was the shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, everybody had Dead or Alive. You'd be like, yo, you play Dead or Alive? Your friend would be like, yo, we have Dead or Alive 3. Everybody owned Dead or Alive 3, especially because of the timing, because it was a launch title. The, another thing I hated about this game, just like Ali PKX said, the fucking costumes in this game were horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. Thanks for the host, Aiden. I hated the costumes in this game. I never owned the DOA 3 booster pack. So the DOA 3 booster pack was a was a demo that you could put in and you can unlock exclusive costumes for Dead or Alive 3. I never owned it, so I never got any of the really sick costumes like the Hayabusa costume where he had his hair down or the Hayate costume. I never had those. The ones that came with the game were terrible for the male characters at least. And this is back when the male characters always got outshined by the female characters when it came to costumes. So, they were doing fan service shit way before DLC was even a thing. Hayate had four costumes in DOA 4. Four. Just like most of the males, if not all of them. You know what I'm saying? So, this was a thing long before DLC came into play. Um, but again, like, a lot of people ask me why I don't spend a lot of time playing DOA 3 and you see me go back to 4 a lot. And this really comes from the fact that I just legitimately don't feel the love in this game um, compared to DOA 2 and DOA 2 Ultimate. This is a great game. It's miles better than any other DOA game that came out, you know, from DOA 5 and 6 up, obviously. Um, excluding DOA Dimensions, but... I just didn't love this game as much as I got older. As a kid, I loved this game. I don't know what it is about this game. It just makes me just, I don't know. It's just not super memorable for me, you know what I mean? Um, I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. It's an amazing game. I love it, but at the same time, I have a love-hate relationship with it because competitively, I just think that this game was super flawed. A three, a three-point hold system, dude, it was insane. But the three-point hold system also encouraged throwing a lot more. So people are gonna hold. You get stunned, they're gonna hold, and I just hate the idea behind that concept. You know what I mean? So, you know, this was the first game that had Hayate in it. As you guys know, I'm a Hayate main enthusiast. I've been playing him a long time. Um, Hayate in this game really, really, really felt like I was playing with an upgraded Ayn. I mean, look at the moves that he has in this game. And that's why a lot of the times, like, you see me play a lot of Ayn in this game back when I was younger. Because I just was just like, what's the point in playing Hayate at this point? I really didn't fall in love with Hayate until DOA 4. Like, this is a Hayate move. This is a Hayate move. This is a Hayate move. And it's like, I mean, I'm sorry, Ayn move. This is an Ayn move. Um, this, you know, 3P is an Ayn move. And then this was his new 3P in the newer games. I just always preferred Ayn really in this game. But I would still play Hayate too because, you know, he was still a sick character or whatever. And I oh, honestly, guys, it's going to sound crazy. But as a kid, I hated Hayabusa 
for some reason, I just fucking hated him. I was like, man, Hayate is so much sicker than Hayabusa. I hated Hayabusa. So I, I had a thing where I would pick Hayate against anybody who used Hayabusa, like my two brothers, and I would just try to beat the brakes off of him because I just really fucking hated Hayabusa as a kid. So, um, just, you know, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the stages and everything just because of the simple fact that I've already done this. If you guys want to see the videos where I've explored the stages, I explored every single stage in DOA 3 to the fullest extent. I explored most of the characters. I have videos on my YouTube channel from last year where I did this or earlier this year, rather. No, no, no. It was 2020 when I did that. So make sure you guys check out those videos um, if you're curious on more details on the stages for DOA 3 or the characters. But we're not going to spend too much time talking about it today. I did just want to play one of the character stories, though. And I'll probably just play Hayate.